They say the definition of insanity is to do the same thing day after day, expecting different results. But right now, we have no expectations. We're living in the moment. I can see the way you're sitting quietly. And this is our backyard. We're currently in shark territory, anchored off in Sid Harbour, a stone's throw away from the Great Barrier Reef. We're first going to take you to the peak of the Whit Sundays here before John accidentally goes for a swim with the sharks. Don't let go. Of I'm not letting go. Oh my God, John. And this wasn't part of the plan. Look out, here she comes. So let's start from the beginning. The woman that I love. We've left our floating home to Kana unattended at anchor, which we're always apprehensive about. But we've taken a calculated risk today because we're dead keen to trek to the roof of the Whit Sundays. The summit stands 437 meters high. We were promised sweeping views. I am hot. Yeah, yeah. Overlooking some of the 74 island wonders that pepper this region. I haven't felt this unfit in a long time, hey. How long has it been? An hour. Okay. Wow. My goodness. Wow, there's our boat. Wow. Wow. I've got this picture in my mind. And it didn't disappoint. It's just wow. the two of us. Just the two of us. Oh, that was but I know I'll have to try. As we looked out, it was hard to believe just a few months ago, John was flying passengers in and out of here before we decided to take the year off work, pack up our lives and buy Takana. Tricky approach because of all the wind, these southwesterlies, the wind comes tailing over the hills. How good was that? Very good. The sun's come out to play. That was so tough. It took two and a half hours and now at the top. And all the books said four hours. Four hours. I mean, yeah, to be so fair, I was like feeling like I was going to have a heart attack as we're going up. Should we go for a swim? Yes. yes. <laughs> I was walking out one evening late. The moon was rising. So we're in Sid Harbour and we will not be going swimming whatsoever. And this is why. A shark had his left leg. It was multiple bites. The shark is believed to return and come back. The British backpackers were rushed ashore. The official government advice, no one should swim in Sid Harbour under any circumstances. We saw a crazy video just a couple of days ago. Taken in this exact spot. It's pretty big, a couple of metres. I reckon six foot, yeah. yeah. A woman was bitten on the thigh. A 12-year-old girl lost her leg and a Melbourne doctor died. By a surgeon or someone who got eaten here. I think it was like 2018. You're kidding. Apparently it's a breeding ground for sharks here and in Nara Inlet, which is just over the ways of it. At this stage, we had no idea John was about to accidentally go for a swim. Not once, but twice. The first time by accident. The second time, I'm not letting go. We had prop problems. And what kind of sharks? I don't know, all sharks, the bitey ones. Oh yes, in Nara Inlet there are hammerheads, so we're gonna see if we I'm can good. spot any for you. I'm good. Thankfully, there's no culling. Sharks are important to the ecosystem here, but there are signs not to swim. Do you really think that now is a great time to put the wheels up, John? No, seriously, like right now. But they were creating drag and we were hungry. You're crazy. Said if the sun set on me there, I'd never make it home. Back on Takana, it was time for brunch. So today I'm going to be making some acai bowls. We have some kiwi fruit, some yogurt, acai bowl powder, berries, bananas, blueberries, and some condiments. Let's do it. Struck down in the middle of it, I built up something to so to get the blender working, we just have to make sure that the inverter is on. Let's give it a whirl. Glad I didn't know why. This is the 
the part where the story takes a bit of a turn. Enjoy! I've been deep down stuck in the gutter. Remember how John cut his finger while fixing our steering cables? What is that? Is that electrical tape? Yep. You've upgraded. Yeah. It's uh. 80% cheaper and 20% stronger than the medical <laughs> tape that you bought. The stitches are out, but it's still healing. And while I was editing one of our videos, I heard a splash and a call for help. What actually just happened? <laughs> what? Are you crazy? I lost my hat, so I jumped in. Into where? Sid Harbour. There's either. I got her a shark uh here. <laughs> I have no words. I thought you were dying back here. You freaked out. To make matters worse, the ladder wasn't out, so it wasn't easy for John to get back on board. I was worried about shark. Can I just say? Like, I was like, pull me out. And you're like, you're like, uh, me, where's <laughs> Well, to be fair, I didn't know what was happening. If you're going to grab someone out of the water, you do the monkey grip thing. I just grabbed you like this. Like, like you're giving me a pull my fingers. No, well, you go like this. Like that. Well, I just don't understand what, how you fell in. Because I was up the front and my hat blew off and I was waiting and it was coming down the back of the boat. And I leaned out and I grabbed the backstay and because of my gammy, gammy finger, I just kind of slipped straight off the backstay <laughs> and um, ended up in the water. And then that's when you remember that there were sharks in there. That's right. <sighs> there be sharks. Oh my God. And if that wasn't enough to get our hearts pumping, now John has to go up the mast for the very first time. We don't really have a choice as we've been having issues with the head sail. It hasn't been unfurling properly, and so John wants to go up and get a closer look. I guess it was lucky he replaced those winch buttons in our last episode. The uh, little plastic cover on the winch button has become perished. Worst case now, I suppose, would be taking someone up in the bosun's chair. You can't stop the winch, it just keeps running. Oh go. my gosh. Up there, no, this isn't a normal thing, it John. Normal. No, it's, it's why not. They exist the bosun's chair. It's for the bosun. No. I think the problem is, is that I just can't imagine life without John. <laughs> and if if I do the wrong thing, John, in terms of trust, this is the ultimate trust right here that you're about to give me. My life is in your hands. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. So, two wraps, closing this. Love you. How many do you want over this one? Five? Well, I've got my weight on it now. Okay. Oh my god. Sorry, can I just... I don't know why it's making that noise. Huh? It's just really tight. I'm going to keep on going. Here, eh? Really? Yeah, like a long way. Is your heart pounding? No. It's not? No. Well, I guess you shouldn't be afraid of heights, should you? Give me the pilot. Come over here for a little check of the head cell. We've got a few problems. Just doesn't seem to be unfurling as it should. Oh, then you think. Pretty high up here. Really? Yeah, I bet the phone reception's good. All right, I'm just gonna have a look at this thing. There's like bird in it. Can you let off the head cell halyard? Yeah, just let it off. All right, releasing. I don't know if that's supposed to be disconnected or not. That all sort of looks all right, I suppose. It's a little tight, but it's not. I don't know, I feel like a sense of ease now that he's up there, but I'm also very nervous to think that I'm going to have to bring him down. I'm obviously down here near the kitchen, near the galley, and I can just smell dinner wafting in the oven. It's going to be a nice treat for him when he comes back down. Salads are ready, mate. Yay! You're back and you're alive. You did a great job. Thanks, babe. Very smooth. <laughs> okay, Are you a happy chappy? Very much so. You survived? Yeah. Oh, we need to put our anchor light on. Anchor light? Oh, hang on. 
already put it on. Oh, did I? Is it on all day? Hopefully there'll be one day where we remember to turn that off. The boat looks bigger from up there. I like good. looking back down on it. As soon as you were coming down and I knew that you were secure, I was fine and happy. It was like a whole weight was lifted off my shoulders. And I'm glad that you're back here. Because you have to try my moussaka. Hey, it's good. Love you. As we watched the epic sunset counting our blessings, we called our rigger Barney Walker for advice. But yeah, you did right. The, the hay it is too parallel, so it can wrap. Can wrap, yeah. We used to hang around town pretty late. I spent the week thinking about her next day. At this point, we've been travelling on Takana for less than two months. In fact, it was less than eight weeks ago we sailed out of Melbourne, green as can be. So we're still trying to iron out all these kinks on our home because honestly, we're worried someone's gonna get hurt. It was easier than so much easier than. That's until someone got hurt. All right, what happened? I don't want to talk about it. What did you do? We started sailing and we put out the head sail and we have obviously a little bit of a furling issue, as you know. There was quite a bit of tension on the furler and so I decided to take one wrap off. Came off the winch, didn't it? Yeah, I don't know if you Ooh, can see that. that. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, that's... Oh dear. I took a wrap off stupidly thinking it was because I had too many wraps around the winch. And in that moment, the head sail just happened to unfurl and the line ran away off the winch. It ripped up off and I tried to hold the line. And That's all like ripped skin. That's not too cold, I think is it's it? actually blistered. Yeah, it is. Yes, I'm choosing to share this mistake online for all to see. And yes, I know I got lucky, but I think it's important to share this experience as a lesson to all of us newbies out there. It was a huge learning curve for me. I know now I need to keep enough wraps on the winch at all times, especially when there's a furling issue we needed to resolve. And just when you thought there was enough going on, get ready for one last crescendo to finish this leg as we sail to Nar Inlet. Remember that hammerhead breeding ground we told you about? Well, I guess after this upcoming scene, you'll be able to put two and two together. I know that you wanted me to be someone I'm not. So while I was editing our latest vlog, John made a painter or a tow line for our tender, and I'm pretty sure he jinxed us. Tell the people, what have you created? Just a little new painter for the tender. Did you make that? No, I didn't. I just tied the splice. It's good because the line floats. To go see. through the prop. Did you catch that? To to go through the prop. The painter went through the prop at the worst time possible while reversing on our anchor on a lee shore. The worst thing has just happened. John's gonna have a go in these waters and a shark infested. Yes, I was nervous for him. I got a gaff. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was ready to whack whatever got in his way. I don't want to go in there either, God. And then talking about sharks yesterday. Why the f did I not see that road? Well, to be fair, we thought it was gonna float, right? The other problem was... If we drag and we need to start the engine to make sure we're not gonna hit the reef, we wouldn't be able to do that. So, he jumped in. Don't let go of I'm it. not letting go. Oh you my God. Got so lucky. Okay, you're amazing. How, what happened? Uh, Are you okay? I should explain. He had this old line on the tender which sinks and it has floats on it and it was no good so I thought oh, I'll get some of this line which which floats you know as you can see and I'm like yeah it's great we'll put that on and uh, anyway as we were backing up on the anchor to test it I forgot that we were tying a tender and wrapped the uh, rope around the prop but it's probably not the best place to do that because it's um as the 100 magic mile says this is apparently a breeding ground for hammerhead sharks so not much fun getting in the water but I shouldn't say that, I should say, that was great fun. I saw two hammerheads, I, um, oh my god, we are so lucky. That is, when I was here with my mates, when I was about 20, we had a charter boat and yeah, we did the same thing and we spent about five or six hours taking turns diving down with a little uh, steak knife trying to cut the rope out of the prop because it was wrapped really tight. So I like, guess the positive thing about this is as soon as we heard the noise, what did you do? I just popped it into neutral. Yeah. 
which is lucky. Do you think that saved us? Uh, well, no, I mean, it was a silly thing for me to forget about in the first place. So, anyway, lesson learned. I'm going to get used to towing a tando because we usually don't do it. So, anyway. That was really stressful. Wow. I'm so glad that you're okay. I actually just wanted to hug you. I'm so, I just. Can you put Did that? you hit your head as you were coming yeah, back yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, thanks. I'm so excited. Can you just pull it in tight? That was a lesson there. You got a free lesson. But what did it look oh, like? It was just loosely wrapped around the prop. It wasn't. So you just had to pull it a little bit. It was just unloop it and away it came off. And so our time at Nara was short lived. Although we didn't leave without seeing the ancient rock art of the Naru people who lived here 9,000 years ago. It's one of the oldest indigenous sites on Australia's east coast. After all that, we're not even going to stay the night. <laughs> See you now, Inlet. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> Bye. And so we survive another week. <sighs> and of course, a huge thank you to our patrons always.